Bank stocks. It's one of the darling investment of Warren Buffett. He has around 248 million worth of banking stocks in his portfolio. Among them are banks like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, and Bank of America. For many people who like a consistent dividend distributing companies, bank stock will often fall into their radar. But before you get all excited and jump into bank stock investment, here are the three most important metrics that you must know. Woo! Hi, welcome back to Mr. Money TV, your financial edutainment channel. Bringing you financial education and fun at the same time. Who say that learning about money can't be fun? If you enjoy learning about money in a fun way, do subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification to get updated with our latest video. Also, for those of you who are more active on Facebook or Instagram, you can follow our latest activity by liking and following us on our page. Now, since the stock market has crashed, many people have been looking for opportunity to buy into great companies at a discount. Price. And on Mr. Money TV, we have been producing a series of stock investing videos to help you to do just that. In our series of how to invest in blue chip stocks, we talked about the blue chip stocks banks that are listed on Bursa Malaysia. There are seven of them, namely Maybank Bahad, Public Bank Bahad, CIMB Group Bahad, Hong Leong Bank Bahad, RHB Bank Bahad, Hong Leong Financial Group Bahad, and M Bank Holdings. Well, I highly recommend you to check out that video and we'll attach the link in the description below. Low. Now, as we mentioned, bank stocks has been the darling investment of Warren Buffett. The core business of bank is to take deposit and lend out that money. If you deposit your money with them, they will give you a small interest. And then they will loan out that money deposited with them to other people, then charging them a higher interest rate. All they have to do is to facilitate the flow of money in the market and make money from that. Well, what's not good about this kind of business, right? But valuing bank stocks can be rather a tricky process as it's slightly slightly different from most other business. So here are the three most important metrics that you must know before you invest in a bank stock. The first metric that you must know is loan to deposit ratio or what we call LDR. The formula is the total loan divided by the total deposit. It tells us how much loan the bank is giving out for every dollar of deposit that they receive. The loan to deposit ratio shows a bank's ability to cover loan losses and withdrawal by customer. A higher LDR indicates that the bank is less liquid and it can be risky during economic downturn. And a low LDR on the other hand indicate that the bank is more liquid. However, lower LDR may potentially mean that the bank is not utilizing all of its assets well to generate return. Anyway, the average LDR of Malaysian bank is around 85% to 90%. The second metric that you must know is the net interest margin. Since the main income of a bank is derived from interest income, it is important to find out the profitability of a bank from its interest rate. Net interest margin is calculated from investment returns minus interest expense divided by average earning asset. One thing that affects the net interest margin is the demand for loan and saving. From the bank's perspective, a loan given out is considered an asset as it generates interest income, while a deposit taken is considered a liability because they need to pay out interest. Therefore, when there's more demand for loan than saving, the bank tend to have more interest income and increases the net interest margin. But when there is more demand for savings than loan, the net interest margin decrease. Another thing that affects the net interest margin is the OPR rate of a country. When there's a rate cut, the interest income of the bank is affected and usually this lead to a drop in the stock price. However, over the long run, low interest rate will lead to higher demand in bank loan and increase the net interest margin. On the contrary, when the interest rate increase, a bank's interest income is expected to increase in the short term. However, over the long run, it leads to a lower demand in loans and lowering the net interest margin. So it is a delicate balance. The final ratio that you must take note of is the ROA, return on asset. The net income divided by total asset times 100. This is expressed in the form of a percentage. And ROA measures how efficient a bank is in using its assets to generate return. This includes how efficient is the bank in utilizing the deposits of the depositor to find suitable borrowers to generate interest income. A general acceptable number for the bank ROA a is above 1%. Generally, the higher the ROA, the more efficient the bank is in using its asset to generate returns for the bank. 
So these are the three metrics that you must know before you invest in a bank stock. The loan to deposit ratio, which measures the liquidity of a bank. The net interest income, which measures the profitability of a bank. And return on asset, which measures the management efficiency in using its asset to generate return. However, this time also poses as an opportunity for investors who want to invest into bank stocks with good quality asset at a discounted price. Banking is one of the few industries that can withstand the test of time again and again. Coupled together with the consistent dividend payment, no wonder it makes one of the favorite industry for Warren Buffett to invest in. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you find today's video beneficial, do hit the like button and share it out with your friends on Facebook or Instagram. I'll see you on the next one.